Okay, this is Charles Lee. He's one of the um, members of the CHS Green Team. He's going to do some quick introductions, and then we'll be ready to start. Jump in with questions anytime you have them. Obviously, it's informal. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Green Bear and Comics Team Workshop. So, we would like to acknowledge the County Soil and Water Conservation District. They have uh, helped us a lot uh, for the rain. Um, for they have helped the transporting, and then with the spigots, and then all the pre-drilling and then cleaning the rain barrels at the Noblesville Wire Treatment Center. They did all of that. So um, let's That's give fine. a round of applause to the Council of Wire Conservation. Uh, also, we're equally uh, grateful to the Carmel Engineering Stormwater Department because uh, all of these barrels here, it was made possible from their, because of their donation. So um, let's give a round of applause to <laughs> Start out with a quick fact. Did you know that in the Carmel Wastewater Treatment Plant, it can treat up to 12 million gallons of water per day during like the rainy months of April. So, like, uh, one way to reduce um, how much water it treats and to um, prevent runoff that goes into lakes, streams, um, and that and sometimes the runoff contains often pesticides and then toxic chemicals. So, rain barrels are a good solution to that problem. So uh, basically, a rain barrel is a container that captures and stores rainwater draining from your roof, and they usually range from 50 to 80 gallons. These rain barrels are 55 gallons, and they're food grade. We still hold pickles. Okay. And then, um, okay, then uh, the bottom, there's a spigot that uh, connects that you can connect the hose and water your plants to. And then, then combining the use of rain barrels and with appropriate plant selection and mulching promotes water conservation. So they benefit your home, your garden, and community. Uh, and it's a money saver too. According to EPA, the garden and lawn irrigation accounts for 40% of residential water use during the summer. And then by using rain grip, um, homeowners can save 1,300 gallons of water during the growing season. Uh, so, and then typically a half inch of rain can fill up one of these barrels. And then, uh, you can also uh, at the end you'll be like oh so um, excited to get another ring room. You can add, get um, get another one and then attach it, uh, put it higher, and then so it connects to the other one. We'll talk about that more later. So you can um, store more rainwater to water your garden. Uh, okay, and then it also leads to healthy um, plants and soil. Uh, tap water it contains lots of fluoride and ions that plants don't really like. So um, the Rainwater is more soft in its like, natural way, and plants like rainwater more than tap water. So this leads to better and healthier plants. And also, um, as I mentioned before, it's reduction of runoff. And because when it rains, uh, there's it carries lots of runoff that contains toxic chemicals and uh, fertilizer and other contaminants. And this runoff can often lead to more growth, algae growth in rivers and streams. And so, yeah, by using rain barrels, we're helping to solve that problem. And now, uh, Maggie, I'd like to talk about reconsideration okay, for the limitations. Um, yeah. Your rain barrel, there's some things to remember. It, it will overflow if you don't use it as much as you should. If it overflows near your house, you can get the foundation and damage that. So, uh, these don't have holes near the top, but you can put one in and put in a spigot as an overflow valve. Or you could use a hose to connect that to a different rain barrel so you can fill up two of them and just uh, go longer before you have to empty them. And over the winter, you need to empty them in one of these holes. There are two holes down at the bottom. In one of them, you can connect a hose. Um, you're going to put two spigots in there, and one you can connect a hose to. And the other one is just a valve that you use to empty it uh, when you're done using it for the season. And you need to empty those so they don't so water doesn't freeze in them and damage them and you should also probably store them in a garage or something so they don't get damaged over the winter. So now it looks like we've gone over a little bit of the background of what rain barrels are and what they're used for and uh, some of their pros, cons and other things like that. So let's get down to business and let's actually start making your rain barrels. <laughs> so if you guys want to um, I actually think this is great right now. Do you guys have enough arm space to move around? So, so that's what we <laughs> talk about with 
Awesome. Okay. So as you can already see from your bank barrel, as Charles said earlier, the holes have already been pretty drilled. So we already, the hardest part for you is done. The three holes are here at the top. Those are where the water actually comes in. And there will be a screen here to go and um, keep away any insects, keep away any sediment, and any other um, things that could get into that aren't water. An action shot. <laughs> you call this action. Is getting started um, using the threader and getting going. Uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Claire Lane, and I'm the backyard conservation coordinator from the Hamilton County Soil and Water Conservation District. She's the phone. My program, we offer a lot of services and information on different urban conservation practices. So we actually offer a free site visit. Let's take a tour. I don't think we can. Let's get this. All right. Oh, here. Cool. Oh, here. <laughs> Thank you. Try again, but it needs to be done. I don't really see anything to bite on to there. Thank you. You're spreading your two bottom holes. Um, we're going to be moving on to the seals. And don't worry, we're, we're, we're going to go at a slow, leisurely pace. But um, people are going to be at different stages in development. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask any one of us here. And um, but we're going to continue on to the to the lid right now, to the ceiling. And the screen. Keep the mosquitoes and bugs out. Exactly. Be careful with this. I cut myself really badly on this, actually. I'm bleeding now. Um, the edges are really sharp. So be very, very careful. These can cut very easily. Right? <laughs> So what we're going to actually do is if you take off your lid, if you take off the front part, yes, yes, the part that's screwed on, you'll see that there's this other black part with the actual three holes in it. And this is what you want to put your screen on top of so that when you take your lid, you put your lid back on, you got to be a little bit forceful and you screw it back on. The seal is on there and it's going to stay in place to keep mosquitoes, bugs, sediments, deposits, other things like that out of there. All the unwanted materials. Action shot. Why don't, you hang, why don't I hang on and you twist? <laughs> I'm not getting it. There you go. Nice. Look at those guns. <laughs> How far down? We're right? both old. I think you're good. I think that would work, like, in the real world. It's good, because we're taking it to Grandma. What do you think of the rain barrel program? I think it's a wonderful thing. Just to grab your attention. Here, for maintenance, it's usually once a year is fine. Um, just if there are, like, hard, big debris from the mosquito, then you can just use your hand and take it out. Or if there's small debris, you can just use a hose and then wire it down. And then store it in, um, like, store it in the garage. Oh, and then for installation, uh, typically you have a downspout, so you can cut off the top part, and then uh, have an elbow piece, so you know, it leads to a rain barrel. And on the and the rain barrel is sitting on one big center block, and then usually another small center block. So if you have two big center blocks, it's kind of too high. So it's one center block, it's not high enough. So you have one big one, then one um, small one. And then yeah, and then you have a connect the hose to a spigot, and then you can just use it to um, water your plants. Yeah. Here's uh, Andy Hughes with um, the details. Dive, you know. Yeah, we'll go ahead. No, no worries. It's, you know, I've had I've been fortunate enough to do multiple installations. Uh, I'm Andy from uh, Circle City Rain Barrels. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to help these guys out with a little bit of education of why these are so important in our communities as a whole. Not only just your 55 gallons that you're collecting on your home, but the other. 500 barrels I've done, the other 200 barrels they've done, all of a sudden you can start to see this collective gathering, right? So I'm going to talk and we're going to quiz you right after this about installation. So, installation. <laughs> uh, one, first off, so the sediment off of your roof that comes from the organic matter landing in the gutters, that can cause a little bit of a sediment to collect around the edges. It will tend to smell, so that's why every other year, you, that's why we want removable lids. So you can take this off, spray that out, scrub it down, and you're good to go for a couple more years. So, installation. Uh, what you're gonna want is a base, right? So I use two cinder blocks and then two solid caps. So basically they're like half cinder blocks, 
I'm not sure if you've ever seen those, but if you go there to a hardware store, you. say, I need a half version of that, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Or you can do two cinder blocks high. It's up to you. It's about curb appeal and uh, what it looks like next to your home. So, step one, you're going to take off the spout, if you have one, on the bottom of your gunner. That's the part that goes out and feeds the water away from your home, right? So take that off. Step two, you're going to put down your base, right? Cinder blocks, whatever that is. All right? I am quizzing. <laughs> Second, what you're going to do is you're going to put your rain barrel up on that base, right? Once it's up on that base, you're going to take the spout and you're going to mark on the gutter where you want that gutter to flow into the barrel, right? Mark that. And it, I'll talk about different versions of insulation as well right after this, but this is my version. It doesn't cost you anything. It just costs an extra little bit of time. So take out the spout, put the base down. You're going to mark on the gutter where you want to cut it. I use a box cutter, literally just an X-Acto knife. It cuts through uh, all aluminum gutters. You cut the round to the seam in the back. Heavy scissors will take care of that. And then you're done with that. So what you want to do after that is you're going to crimp the edges somehow. If you don't have crimpers at home, you can slit the back by the uh, um, seam because you're going to want to be able to pinch it to get that spout back on there. Right? So once you've crimped it, then you're going to put the spout on there. You're going to put your barrel there. And you're going to pat yourself on the back because you've installed your own rain barrel by yourself.